Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 25th May 2024. So let's get started with our discussion. So before getting started, I want to make a small announcement just to remind you students. So here we are going to start our new batch for prelims come main GS foundation from 27th May 2024 onwards. So here we are going to provide 30 days of free demo classes. So here the demo classes will be given in three ways. So first one is your offline or classroom. So if you are coming and sitting in classroom or offline, we are providing 30 days of free demo classes. So in these 30 days, here what you are going to get. So you can complete your geography will be done by Villa sir. And next one is I will be taking some strategy classes like how to read newspaper and how to write a mains answer and even how to answer the prelims questions and what about this UPSC syllabus and uh, micro listing of UPSC syllabus. So everything I will be taking care of in these one month. So if you attend these classes, then you will be having complete clarity on syllabus of UPSC. And next one is how to write mains answer and next one is how to read Hindu newspaper and also how to solve prelims questions and along with this you will be also completing your geography both world and Indian geography clear and next here you can also get online classes so that is through our app so you have to download our Rathod's IS app and you will be getting access through that link in that app so that you can watch whatever the class here it is going on on offline you will be getting live link in app and in app we are also having the specialty of asking your doubts not only the message format you can talk so that here faculty will be replying to your questions and this one is on youtube also you will be getting live streaming on YouTube, we are providing 7 days and on online app, we are providing 10 days and on offline 30 days. And if you are staying in Hyderabad or if you are wishing to take foundation course, so I request you to uh, come to office and sit in the class and you have to listen to the classes. And if you want to take this online class or YouTube live, so you have to do registration. So for offline, there is no need of registration. You can directly come to class on 27th and you can take the class and here the timings for the first one week is morning 11 to evening uh, like around 4 pm you have the classes and between you have one hour of lunch okay from 1 to 2 lunch again 2 to 4 1 session and 11 to 1 1 session so there are four hours of classes so for the first one week okay from 27 to next sunday you will be having the class timings will be 11 to 4 pm okay and that is the thing and next one is you can register by using this qr code okay or else in this video in description i will be giving you the registration form you can fill that and you can register so why registration is compulsory because so we are creating a whatsapp group of the students who are going to join online class and there we are going to provide you the link of youtube and as well as app Okay, so whatever which is suitable for you, then you can listen. Because in iOS, this app is not uh, supporting. So we are going for, uh, for adjustments. Okay, so for that, we are providing YouTube Live. So for the iOS uh, users, so you can watch this free online live classes through YouTube. Clear? So do registration for sure so that you will be getting link or else you will be not getting link okay so that is the thing about this 30 days of free trail demo classes and if you have any friends or if you are anyone interested to prepare for this upsc coaching so ask them to join either offline or online free demo classes clear and if you have any queries you can call on this number 8074765513 and now let us move on to our hindu newspaper so this is Hindu newspaper. So in, for, in this front page, in city page, in, say, in states pages, so there is nothing much important in our newspaper today. So there are three important editorials. 
that are very relevant from our examination point of view. So we are going to see those articles which are relevant. So let us see the first topic. So first topic it is about the missing links IMEC as shown by the Gaza war. So here the keyword is IMEC. So what is this IMEC? You have to know that for sure. So here let us see some dimensions that you have to think from this article point of view. So first one is IMEC. So first you have to know what is the full form of this IMEC. So it is economic corridor. So here under this IMEC we want to connect. India wants to connect Europe. Okay that too via using Middle East. So this is IMEC. And you have to understand how can we connect this Europe through which ways. There are four important things we have to see that. And what is the importance of this IMEC? So what we are going to get or advantages of this IMEC. And after this advantages or significance, you have to know one more thing. That is recently here issue it is going on. It is about Israel-Palestine issue. So Israel-Palestine, there are also part of West Asia, right? So because of this still palestine issue, it is going to have some impact. So it is going to have some impact on this IMEC. So what is that? And in this context, what is the way forward? So what can be done? So all these are the important dimensions that you have to see. And this basic facts, how so these two are important from your prelims. And this year for sure, you can get questions regarding this IMEC from world geography point of view especially from mapping so you have to see the map and you have to see where this route is passing and through which countries and in which ports also so they may get uh, they may give question like ports and stay and the country they where they are located so that way also you can get question from this area so you have to be prepared well with the map and remaining importance impact way forward so these are important from your Mains point of view. Okay, now let us see this topic in detail. So, first of all, what is this IMEC that is India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor? Okay, what is this? India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor. So, what happens on sidelines of this G20 summit? So, it was held in 2023 in New Delhi. So, here this memorandum of understanding which was signed. And why to develop rail road shipping corridor, especially to connect India with Europe, that too via Middle East. So, which are the countries? So, we have different countries like India, US, Saudi Arabia, UAE, France, Germany, Italy, and European Union. They are part of this MOU. So, this is also very important from your prelims. And if you are talking about the proposed IMEC which involves what? It includes rail connectivity, shipping lanes and high data cables and as well as energy pipelines. So these are the important things which involve in this IMEC project. So if you see further more details, so this, this IMEC will be very helpful which will be adding value to already existing maritime and as well as road networks. So in this way we can enhance the movement of trade and even services and even transit to and as well as from this India and UAE, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel and Europe. Okay, so these are the countries which are form, which are form in this IMEC. So which are those here India, UAE, Saudi, Jordan, Israel and Europe. So because of this Israel-Palestine issue, yes it is going to have some impact on this IMEC. So why this IMEC project is important? So what is the significance? So first one is, so this forms infrastructure and connectivity perspective. And even from geopolitical angle also it is very important. And this project involves two separate corridors. So first one is East Corridor. So by this East Corridor, India is connecting this Arabian Gulf. And this one is we have Northern Corridor. So from Arabian Gulf to we are connecting to Europe. So these are the two corridors 
that are present in this IMEC. And next one is according to MOU, here that is Memorandum of Understanding. So IMEC is expected to the stimulate economic development. So this economic development can be done through enhanced connectivity and economic integration that is between Asia, Arabian Gulf and Europe. So these are very very important points. So remember those countries and those places that I am saying. So the new corridor which has other important dimensions including reliable and secure regional supply chains and better trade accessibility and trade facilitation. So for all these things yes this new corridor is very important. And in geopolitical terms IMEC is touted as a counter to China's Belt and Road Initiative. So India from very early days which had objected to it because China-Pakistan economic corridor it is a one of the key component of BRI that is Belt and Road Initiative and this BRI which runs to territories that is POK, Park Occupied Kashmir. So it is claimed by India and India is saying that we are not going to accept this China-Pakistan economic corridor because it is moving under POK. So what will be the impact of this Israel-Palestine conflict on this IMEC project? So this is very important. So first one is because of this ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict which is increasing there is day by day intensifying of the issue which is going on and even because of this we are going for diplomatic cooperation and that the project of the scale of this IMEC would have warranted as a prerequisite and now what happened the resolving of this issue between Israel and Palestine is becoming complicated now. And the Saudi Arabia Israel peace deal might not be possibility to the near future now. So even that will be increasing the anger in this Arab world. And this one is a rocket launcher near Iraq's Baghdad International Airport which also added to the raising number of attacks targeting US forces in the Middle East. So even US is also involved here. So the war direct impact remains regional and as well as geopolitical consequences. Okay, so what can we do? So what is the way forward? So how can we make this IMEC viable project? So first one here is we have to do some empirical study on what will be the economic benefits of these corridors. Okay, so whenever we are using this corridor, the journey time will be reduced by 40% and whenever the journey time is in, uh, decreased or reduced, then we can also reduce this transit cost by 30%. And there are some speculations that multiple handling of cargo and multinational transit that would increase carriage and compliance cost. But we have to have a proper empirical study. And this one is a robust financial framework needs to be in place. Okay. Since there is no binding financial commitments on any of the signatories of the corridor and investments will have to be attracted from government international organizations and as well as private sector entities. So in these areas like corridors, investments, so they are also very much attracted to the governments. And next one is we have to go for multinational operational framework. Okay, so we need multinational operational framework as the corridor involves facilitating trade across different legal system and also a multinational framework is very much necessary. Okay, so these are some important things that you have to see from this IMEC point of view. And now let us move on to next topic. So here you can see today's lead article. It is about RBI surplus transfer. So already in yesterday's class we gave some uh, somewhat some description or some idea regarding RBI's transfer and surplus amount it has. So now the question arises where from where RBI is getting surplus. So why RBI is supplying money to central government. So all these questions need to be addressed right to make this concept clear. So here we are going to see that. So first let us see the dimensions. So this article is talking about RBI is transferring surplus amount. Okay it's transferring surplus amount to central government so this is the title and here you have to see from where RBI is getting money that is sources 
so where are where they are getting and how they are spending so you have to see expenditure and as well as source of revenue of rbi and what are the excess it is having why this year it got excess so as you all know that there is increasing of inflation in market and even there is tight monetary policy etc but how rbi is generating income that you have to see what are the reasons for this excess amount now and next important thing that you have to see is what is the importance or significance of this move so these are the areas that you have to focus and this topic is important from your gs paper 3 under economy clear now let us see this topic in detail so why does a news recently central board of reserve bank of india that is rbi approved 2.11 lakh crore surplus of dividend transfer to the central government of accounting year 2023 to 2024 so where rbi is getting money so first one is profit derived from foreign currency assets for example here from foreign currency like like assets like bonds treasuries central bank deposits so from there it is getting income and this one is earnings from local rupee based government securities and whenever they are going for short term based lending they will be getting interest and this one is borrowing management from both central and state governments and regulation of banks and non banking financial bodies and commission from overseeing government transactions and specific undertakings underwriting so in all these cases yes rbi will be getting money but that money it can be used for some other purpose for example for operating expenses for electricity bill or rent or salaries etc and this one is for currency printing staff remuneration transactions okay and next one is dealer compensations interest paid on deposits and borrows so on these areas csrbi will be spending its money and after spending that money so if there is any amount which is surplus will be there and that surplus will be given to central government that is called as rbi surplus transfer so here what are the reasons why there is increasing of rbi surplus is the first one is what happened in us there is increasing of monetary policy there is increasing of interest rate okay right to control inflation us came with increasing of interest rate so there is high profits that rbi got from this treasury bonds so according to this uh, us department of treasury so india invested or rbi invested 240.6 billion dollars in this us ter- treasuries but now there is a very high bond yields because of monetary policy tightening of us and even there is some substantial interest income for rbi from this foreign assets so this is the first reason and next one is because of increasing of forex holdings of rbi so there is also a very sharp jump in surplus amount can also be attributed to higher income from forex holdings to the forex holdings to the central bank and next one means there is also high earning from interest so the shifting of domestic liquidity into deficit mode has contributed to central banks higher income when liquidity enters deficit rbi leads to banks and lends to banks and as well as earn the interest so in this way here rbi also got good amount of interest and even nowadays we can see there is increasing of gold prices so because of this increasing of price of gold it also added to the overall expense expansion of this rbi balance sheet and this one is intervention in forex market so rbi intervention in this forex market has contributed to higher incomes for example here rbi sold securities of worth 153 billion in forex market in financial 2024 so in this way here rbi is getting excess money so now let us move on to next important article in the same editorial page so i hope you can see southern sojourn so this article is talking about antarctica treaty consultative meeting okay 46 antarctica treaty consultative meeting 
so this article is very important and here you have to know lots and lots of things so what is antarctica treaty about what is this meeting what is agenda of this meeting so why india hold that meeting so earlier when india hold that meeting so like that you can get questions in your prelims so here india is hosting 46th session of antarctic treaty consultative meeting and it is also called as antarctic parliament it is also called as antarctic parliament where in kochi so this 46th antarctica treaty uh, consultative meeting so it is also referred as antarctic Par parliament so what it is it is antarctic parliament and it is to be hosted from may 20 to may 30 at kochi india so who is the organizer so the national center for polar and ocean research goa has organized the meeting under the auspices of ministry of earth sciences so india india last hosted this atcm in new delhi in 2007 okay next one is if you see the participation the representatives from all 56 member countries of antarctic treaty it is also very important and next one is if you see this antarctic treaty so what all about this antarctic treaty so it is international agreement so what it is it is an international agreement and this agreement which governs activities in antarctica it was signed on december 1st 1959 it is very important and when it came into force in year 1961 so what is the purpose of this antarctica treaty especially to scientifically we have to preserve and we have to ensure that it remains exclusively for peaceful purpose so whatever the uses and whatever the studies that we are doing in antarctica so it should be for only for peaceful purpose and if you see the principles of this antarctica treaty so it designate antarctica as a neutral demilitarized zone and to be used for solely peaceful purpose so this principle is very important and if you see the signatories it was initially signed by 12 countries it now includes 56 countries with india joining in 1983 okay india joining in 1983 so when india joined in year 1983 so if you see india in antarctica so we have some stations those are called as research stations so the first station we established in antarctica is called as dakshin gangotri so it is india's first research station established in 1983 and was operational until 1990 so we have to remove this and this one is maitri was established in 18, 1989 and it is still active and supports summer and winter crews so it is active till now and this one is bharati bharati opened recent past in 2012 and is located in the spites bay coast and it is focusing on oceanographic and geological studies so at present how many stations india have india have two okay so in that way you have to remember so what is the agenda of this 46 antarctic treaty consultative meeting so first one is india will introduce a new working group and aim it is to formulate and regulate and to monitor tourism and protect the continent's fragile ecosystem so next one is we have to focus on sustainability and environmental protection it is also very important the conference will address sustainable management of antarctic resource biodiversity prospecting and impacts of climate change on the continent and now let us move on to other page so today is saturday there is no open page there is no text and context there is spotlight so re remember the spotlight is not much useful So in this news page here you can see one article. So title says integration of CAPMs will save money bring homogeneity. So this is the thing which mainly said by national security advisor. He suggested that we can go for integration of central armored police forces on the lines of joint theater commands. So here you have to know what is a CAPF and different types of CAPF and where they are bordering. So from this area also you can get question from your friends. And if you move on to another page, so leave this election page, it is not at all useful. 
and here in this page number 10 you can see one article it is about cyclone rimal likely to make landfall near bengal tomorrow okay so here you have to know about what is a cyclone rimal so if you see it is going to make a landfall near bengal means uh, where it had been originated in which sea so this is arabian sea this is bay of bengal and is going to affect bangladesh and it is also going to affect west bengal so it has been originated in this bay of bengal right so let me explain you like how you can expect questions from this cyclone for example in your geography you might be studying about the conditions which are necessary for forming of cyclone and from main point of you can get uh, differences between cyclone and anti cyclone and what are the properties of a cyclone and even earlier the question your prelims based on the naming or labeling of the cyclone diagram also what is i so which is a calm air calm area bands like that they asked question from these even image or diagram of the cyclone so be careful with that and now let us see this topic in detail so this topic is important from gs paper 1 under geography and even from disaster management also it is very important okay from gs paper 3 so kantai says that imd india meteorological department has issued a warning for a potential severe cyclonic storm and the name of that cyclonic storm is cyclone rimal that could impact coast of west bengal and bangladesh so this name of rimal is given by oman it is very important and this rimal means sand in arabic language so what is the potential effect of the cyclone rimal so first one is the cyclone may impact sundarban region so already many a times you got question regarding mangroves and mangroves in india and sundarbans so you have to focus on this wetlands part from environment and ecology you have to see where are this mangroves located and important sundari plants and even you have to see the location of mangroves in india so what are the services provided by them so from this area you can get both mains and prelims based questions okay cyclone may impact sundarban region if the landfall happens on the indian coast and coincides with high tide and even it also have the potential to cause damage to even our ecosystem so here we are also having sh uh, shallow bathymetry or funnel shaped geography of northern bay of bengal so because of this geography also there is a chance of intensification that is increasing of cyclone range okay and even there will be increasing of risk of storm surges and flooding and i want to give you one prelims question student in the south atlantic and south eastern pacific regions in tropical latitudes cyclone does not originate what is the reason so here we have directly abcd option so please let me know your answer in the comment box don't forget guys and now let us move on to next page so here you can see one article it is about heat wave kills more than a dozen in gujarat in a week so already we have discussed about heat wave and what is the impact of heat wave so you have to know what is the definition of heat wave as per imd or world meteorological organization and you have to see the temperature what is the difference in the plains in as well as hilly regions and when can we call what is this uh, wave heat wave and what are the precautions can be taken so all these things that you have to know okay now let us move on to next page that is about business and here it is talking about oil poses risk farm sector to firewall so actually now again there is one problem in our economy that is volatile oil prices right so whenever there is increasing of oil prices that will leads to inflation for sure so here this article says that positive signs for farm sector from normal monsoon should firewall india against volatile global commodity prices so actually you know that now imd came up with uh, estimates of monsoon and skymet came up with estimation of monsoon so they said that we are going to have the good monsoon but we hear what happened across the globe or across the world there is volatility in the commodity prices so ministry says future inflation path shaped by several elements including even rabi harvest 
and we are focusing on especially how market expectations will be and what is the produce and also even investment activity which remains expansive and we have to see resurgence in the rural consumption demand. So because of all these things whether we have to see what will be the impact on our economy and even oil seeds is very important topic from your geography and you have to see the crops of oil seeds like groundnut and uh, also some sunflower oils okay different oils you can see palm oil etc and 2019 there was question regarding palm oil okay and if you move on here you can see one small article it is saying about India's 400 million casual labor market needs a structural shift. So I find this article is much more important and we are going to see that article in every dimension. So we have to understand what is formalization, what is informalization. So what are advantages, what are the disadvantages, okay, everything that you have to see. And let us have the discussion on that topic. Okay, context says that with almost 85 percentage of informal labor generating more than half of the GDP, India requires a structural shift towards structured and formal employment. So actually you know that about 85 percentage of Indian labor, they are working in informal sector. They are not having any social security benefits and said that, so this is the thing which said by ISF, Indian Staffing Federation. So why? Because it is an apex body representing con uh, country's contract staffing industry. And if you see the details, it says that the plight of lower income and semi-skilled workers underscores the pressing need for concerted action. So what happened? So why people are moving towards informal? Because they are, uh, they are having like no proper skill. And in this informal sector, the uh, skill is very a, like they will not taking care of skill so that they are providing semi-skilled jobs and lower income jobs. So income inequality and rising poverty levels they are the challenges that we are facing and we have to address those challenges. And even it is very important to initiate structural shift towards formalization and to ensure equitable opportunities and sustainable livelihood for all. And now we have to see what is the difference between formal and informal sector. So formal sector means nothing but we are having a very formal contract between employer and employee and it is a predefined work conditions. So there will be like you have to come at this time and you have to leave at this time and you will be having a definite targets of work. And this sector which consists of organized group of people working in the same environment and legally and socially aware their rights. An informal sector which is consisting of unincorporated private enterprises and normally they are owned by individuals or households. So engaged in the scale and production of goods and services which are operated under partnership basis or like that. Okay, so this is a difference between this informal and formal. So in this informal sector people they are not getting any social security benefits. And now I want to give you one more important thing like what are the recent government initiatives related to informal sector because government cannot ignore them because 85 percentage of our labor they are working in informal sector so for them government came up with some steps so first one is e shrimp portal and next one is labor courts pradhan mantri shem yogi mandan yojana and pm swanidhi scheme and pradhan mantri kisan sammanidhi World Bank support to India's informal working class. So these are some important initiatives came up by the government for informal sector. So these are the some important things that you have to remember from this article point of view. And these are the some important articles which appear in our today's newspaper. So one more time I am reminding you once again. So if you want to avail this opportunity of 30 days of free trail of uh, classes of Rathors IS Academy. So do come to classroom and sit in classroom for four hours every day so that you can complete entire your geography and you are going to learn how to read newspaper and we are providing some strategy classes and even in between you will be getting uh, motivation classes also. Okay. So if you have any query regarding online or app related things, 
सो प्लीज़ कॉल मी ऑन दिस नंबर एट ज़ीरो सेवन फोर सेवन सिक्स डबल फाइव वन थ्री एंड इफ़ यू वॉन्ट टू गेट फ्री क्लासेस ऑफ ऑनलाइन ओके और यूट्यूब स्ट्रीमिंग सो प्लीज़ डू रजिस्ट्रेशन रजिस्ट्रेशन फॉर्म इज गिवन बिलो सो इफ यू नॉट फाइंड इन द डॉक्यूमेंट यू कैन सेंड मी यूर नेम योर स्टेट एंड योर व्हाट्सएप नंबर on this whatsapp number so that i can make the registration or i can create a group in whatsapp so that you will be getting links there okay so that's all students i hope you enjoyed this class and don't forget to hit the like button and please do share this class to your friends and subscribe to rathors is academy and to get this notes please download the app okay thank you so much for watching